Hello, my fellow Bereans. I feel like the last few days I have been in a marathon trying to set this Bible up. And it's funny, I just felt this pressure to get it set up as quickly as possible because this is something that connects with me trying to set up this Journal of the Word Bible because I'm moving notes from an older Bible into this and I'm organizing them. And it was very crammed with notes. And one thing about this Bible what I'm feeling about this Bible is I really want it to just be very informative, like a study Bible, historical information, or linking Bible verses together. But there is a side to Bible study where what you're reading impacts you on a deeper level. And so many combine it into one, and my older one of this kind of had some of that in there. But I really felt a desire to have this be just study. This Bible, in the margins, I am going to be writing all of those life application type of information. There's so many times when you're listening to a sermon and you're hearing things about applying it to your own life that aren't really in the scripture. There can be so much wisdom to that. And so I don't want to lose that. It's just for me, I want it in a separate spot. And so this is going to be that life application part of it. Actually, the reason I felt so rushed to get this set up is because in my Bible series, the next book I'm moving to is Genesis. And in there, right in Genesis 1, there's a whole series that a pastor was speaking about as far as applying that to your own life, how Genesis 1 kind of mirrors our recreation. It was really neat, but it wasn't something that I needed in my study Bible. So those kind of things are what I would write in here. Also, when you're studying, there's that part of you sometimes that wants to gush. And I know a lot of people do the journals, but for some reason, I like putting it right next to the word. So then later I can be coming back to a section in the Bible, see how that had impacted me in a previous year. Something that I had done when I started using this is date those entries. And so when I move them into here, there'll be dates and I'll be seeing in that year how a verse impacted me. So it's really kind of as I study the Bible here, at the end of it, there may be times that I wanna gush and write it in here. The one thing I do differently than I think some people is that I don't force myself to do this. It's just usually there's something that comes up that is exciting or I wanna gush about. And so this would be my place to do it, to praise God and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna be doing that in here. So that's the life application part of this Bible. And so the very next video that I post, if nothing changes, is gonna be the book of Genesis. And you're gonna be seeing me put notes into both of these Bibles. So now I wanna talk about the prayer Bible side of this. Actually, before I get into the prayer Bible side of things, I want to pause and say a huge thank you to Cecilia. She is someone that has come along beside this ministry to support it financially, and I really appreciate it. And she's just had so many encouraging words as we've continued along in this journey. I just don't think I could thank her enough. So thank you, Cecilia. So I do have a whole series on my channel of how my prayer Bible is set up, and this is very similar, but I did make some changes and I wanna show you some of the things in it. On the side here of my Bible is room for notes, and because of that, I didn't want tabs going across on the page, so I ended up creating inserts so that the tabs that are on the side here all have an insert now, and that's something that I've upgraded for my prayer Bible that, that did, in case it's noticeable, it did wear out the binding where it's not straight down anymore it comes out but i personally don't have any regrets about that i just want this bible to be as usable as possible but it is too bad that it's like that because it's hard to get it see around the end of here because it curves around quite a bit but anyways i'll show you these so we have these names of god i do plan on gluing this in but i actually just finished this and i want to make sure there aren't any further changes i'm going to make before I actually glued into my Bible. Uh, so anyways, here are these names of God and I was really excited. I wanted to create templates, so I was doing it my own way, very my typical way of doing things, which is very informative. And so we have in this one, Elion, the Most High God. And then this was something I found where it's found in the Bible. These are some references in the Bible. It actually occurs 28 times, so these aren't all of them, but they're ones that I can mark up. And here is a verse that it goes to. A lot of times this verse is the verse that it's next to, but this is apparently the first one, Genesis 14, 18. 
So this is what Elion looks like in Hebrew, and they actually write backwards to the way that we write. So this is El Elion. But as I was looking at names of God, I came across these sheets, which I think are beautiful. And this is El Elion. God Most High, and there's 31 days of exploring this topic of God being Most High. These are by wordsbyandylee.com. This isn't quite like it looks. I didn't download her photos and put it into Word like I normally do. I just clicked on the image and then printed it off and then printed my information on the back side. I hope that makes sense. So there's a little bit more prettiness on the edges that didn't make it onto my sheets. And so what I'll do is I will include a link in the pinned comment to her series. So what you'll do is she has a blog post and then at the bottom of it is this sheet here which you click on and then you print it off and then underneath that you can go from this was the one for January. You can click the next button, go to February, and that will bring you to her next name of God. So that's what I did with this. Like this is El Roy, and I might not be saying that correctly. This is how it is in the Hebrew. When this shows up, it's in Genesis when Hagar was running from Sarah. The end of this time of God coming and seeking her out, she calls him, you are the God who sees me. And so El Roy, that's one of those names of God. And I put these verses here. They don't have that name in there, which usually that's what I have here. But on this one, I just love the fact that these verses are talking about how God sees us and he knows us. I think I saw that in somebody's website about El Roy, and I just liked that thought process. So then again, on the back is this reading plan of the God who sees and it says right on here, February, which you don't have to do it, of course, in the month of February, but it does have 28 days. So those are all of these. And so I won't show you much more. There's Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. And I loved this image because this verse is when Abraham goes up to Mount Moriah with his son Isaac, and he's been told that he's going to sacrifice his son, which is a custom of the people's that he had come from. And then God provides a lamb. He shows how he's different. When Jesus refers to this event, he says, this is when Abraham saw my day and rejoiced. So he saw how we don't need to sacrifice our own children. God is going to provide. So anyways, I like that. But then once again, there's this Bible reading plan. So when you get these inserts for me, what you'd receive are these, but you'll need to go to her website to download her image. And so what I did was there is a 12th one, but we're actually currently in November and December. But these are actually ones that she has just created this year. I stumbled upon this in the year that she's creating them. So we don't have November or December yet. So I would just add that to my Bible when it happens. So what I ended up doing were just those names of God. So then the next section is this start of the great controversy. And so what I did is I have an insert now for each of these. So this one is Isaiah 14. So really the great controversy, we can tend to think this all started in the garden and that it's all about the human race. But the Bible tells us that this controversy started in heaven and it was Satan who at the time was named Lucifer. He was the morning star and he became corrupted and he wanted to exalt himself above the stars of God. Um, I'll show you. So this is Isaiah 14 and we have Ezekiel 28. He was perfect when God created him, but he was corrupted by his wisdom, by the reason of thy brightness. And then he started spreading lies by the iniquity of thy traffic. And then we know in Revelation 12, 12 that he was cast down to the earth. And the deception is going to continue, but he has great wrath. He knows his time is short. And we know that Satan hates the human race very much. I actually have a study on my channel about why Satan hates us so much. And it's going to be something that's going into my travel witnessing Bible. Uh, and so that will be coming. I think I'm going to do a video on Genesis just to show you how I use this Bible. And then I really want to get into that witnessing Bible. I want to get that ready. It's very hard. I have too much stuff I want to do because I really want those notes moved over into my new Bible. So it's hard to break away, but I think I need to set that witnessing Bible up. So anyways, there's the orange of Satan and just remembering. So when I'm reading through that, I'm reminded of 
how this controversy started. We're side characters in the whole thing. We got caught up in that great controversy between good and evil. Whose way is right? Is Satan right who says, do it your own way, it doesn't matter? Or is God's way right, which is all about love? But because of love, we do need to choose to follow God's way of doing things. Because God is love and we are fallen beings, we don't often know why what we're choosing is so bad for us, but God knows. So anyways, the next set of tabs are going through our fall. And so like here's Genesis 6, 5. Because of that, you cannot see my face for no man may see me and live. So the sad thing is before the fall, remember Adam and Eve were in the garden and they saw God face to face. But after the fall, we can no longer see him face to face. And so anyways, this is all the orange. Uh, I want to jump ahead here because, so I'll just jump ahead. This is that last column. And then in the very end of times, they shall see his face and his name shall be on their foreheads. And so that's the end of the whole great controversy is we get to see God face to face. So anyways, so continuing through here, I have, sometimes I have pictures and sometimes I have just have words. And this is Isaiah 4, 1, where seven women shall take hold of one man saying, we will eat our own bread. And I have on here Matthew 4, 4, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So we shouldn't be eating our own bread. We should be following what God says. And then these seven women say, we're going to wear our own apparel. And Isaiah 61 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath clothed me with a robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. So they want to eat their own bread wear their own apparel instead of Christ's righteousness. Women, by the way, these seven women in Bible prophecy, women stand for a religious system, a church. And we'll be doing that when we go through the travel witnessing Bible. I'll be showing these Bible symbols. And so you'll be seeing that more clear, but it just gives weight to this. And then they say, only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. So we want to be called Christians but we want to eat our own bread and wear our own apparel. So we want to do everything our way. We just want to have the name. We want to be Christians in name only. And so the last one I decided to put with this is Matthew 15 verses 8 through 9. And then that goes with Isaiah 29 about we're honoring him with our lips, but our heart is far from him. So I put both of those together. So that is our deep sinfulness, um, how much we need a savior. And then we come down to these red tabs about what God's going to do for believers. And we have Ezekiel 36, 26, a new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and I will give you a heart of flesh. So I like that. And one thing I haven't mentioned in this video, but I mentioned in the other video, I put them right next to the verse. Something that's been said about prayer Bibles is that, oh, people are looking at a verse and they can take it out of context. But that's the reason I put it into a Bible. So uh, I feel like for me, this is the safest way I can do it is to put it into a Bible because it's right next to it in context. So that's just the way I feel about it. And having a notebook that's separate works too because you can have your Bible right next to you. And look, I just like having it all together. That's just a personal preference. There's no one right way to do this. So then we have Ezekiel 36, 27. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgment. These are some of my favorite verses because we can get caught up so much in trying to do it on our own. But God in every place, he says, I will do these. But remember, he stands at the door and knocks. He doesn't force anybody. You have to choose. And so that's kind of what this prayer walk is all about is reorienting my heart. I can feel it as I'm going through these verses now, as I read them and say them, that it's just reminding me of God's goodness and how much he loves us and this great honor that we have that we can ask him these things that he's willing to do this for us, that he didn't just destroy us. So it just, it's so powerful. So then the next one I have about what God does for us is of course, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world in John 1 29. So that's right here on the next page. And I love this verse. I found this picture online, Philippians 1 6. He who began a good work in you will bring it to completion. And 
I just really need to be reminded of that every day because I can so easily fall into trying to wear my own robe of righteousness and trying to figure this out on my own and I can't do any of it. My righteousness is filthy rags. And then here we see he says, I will put my laws in their minds and write them in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. That's in Hebrews 8.10 and I liked this verse too, 1 John 2.3. Now by this we know that we know him if we keep his commandments. And that's because not because we're doing it in our own strength, but because if God's written them in our hearts, that's the only way for us to do it. So just the way that we know. So in the back here, I put in another one to help me line up the tabs. Because this Bible became so misshapen, it was very hard to do. And they're just not going to line up that well. But that was my attempt. I put it in the back as well. So now in the purple we have what should our response be and so here is i call heaven and earth to witness against you today that i have set before you life and death the blessing and the curse therefore choose life that you may live you and your descendants to love the lord your god to obey his voice and to cling to him for he is your life and the length of your days and so that's the thing that's in our power is choice we can choose we have to remember we can't do it ourselves we need god but we can choose we can make a choice every day with what we're watching we can cling to god and ask him for help so we also need to remember as i was saying isaiah 64 6 but we are all as an unclean thing and all our righteousness are as filthy rags and we all do fade as a leaf and our iniquity like the wind have taken us away one thing on this too is if you get these inserts from me a lot of times i have things on the back uh, so you can decide if you want to print out both sides or not but i love this in isaiah 64 it includes that verse verse 6 unclean things but it's all about how we're asking god to rend the heavens to come down to save us so this is just all about god coming down to rescue us so i just decided to put that in there with that so the other thing we can do is repent therefore and turn again that your sins may be blotted out so that there may come times of refreshing from the presence of the lord and then here is about how we need to abide in him that's something that we need to do and so that again is my last one and then this is the thing that gives me chills every time and this is that promise at the end ah this is isaiah 25 verse 7 and 8 the lord will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all the people and the veil that is spread over all nations he will swallow up death and victory and the lord god will wipe away tears from off all faces and the approach of his people shall he take away from all the earth for the lord has spoken it and then the next thing he promises is what do you imagine against the lord he will make an utter end affliction shall not rise up the second time so so many people think that this whole controversy is going to continue for eternity that satan will continue for eternity that he's in charge of hell so i love that he is going to put an end to this controversy there will be a final end and then here is first corinthians 13 13 for now we see in a mirror darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of these is love. And then Revelation 21 verse 3, And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. And this one, he will wipe away every tear, no death, no sorrow, no crying. All these things are gone forever, Revelation 21, 4. So on the back of this sheet, there's actually a little bit more. And I was just in a very rainbow mood. <laughs> Revelation 21, 5. And Revelation 21, 5 through 7. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Write, for these things are faithful and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. That's Revelation 21, 5 through 7. And then what I was showing you before, they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. Revelation 22, 5. And I liked this as I was looking at pictures and verses. This came up. Maranatha, 
the day when I behold your beauty. And so then on the back of this, I love this promise about the tree. And so I wanted to remind myself in the garden, we lost access to the tree of life. And then in the end we're promised, in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. Revelation 22, 2. So we're going to have access again to that tree of life. And that's how we live forever with God, face to face. It's going to be in New Jerusalem. And so then, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. So that is the end to the great controversy. We're going to see him face to face. So something that I've added to this Bible that I didn't have in the other prayer Bible. Oh, this will be a good time to say this. So say you like the inserts that are in this, but you have a smaller Bible. Just remember... If you want the inserts from me, you can get them and then you can shrink the pictures down so it fits in your prayer Bible, whatever your size is. Um, I do have a video on that process showing how you can just grab that little corner of the picture and slide it up or down, make it the size that you want it. So I go through all of that in printing and so that will also be an end card at the end of this video. So all of these, don't be discouraged if you don't want to buy a bigger Bible. So this is one of the prayers of the Bible, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And that's the only one I have so far, but there are ones like where Paul prays for people. And so that's going to be an insert I'm going to create and add into this. It's always been something that I love seeing our prayers. Like there's the prayer of Jabez, which I actually have as an insert. So it should end up as a tab over here as well. So then at the bottom here are these, and because my Bible is so, the binding has taken a beating because of all the inserts I've added, they're kind of, you know, it just comes out and around. So this, it's hard to make it line up, but I just did my best. And because they're all different colors, it works. But so these are verses on the character of God. can't remember. I did um, change some of the images that I had and I also reorganized this because when I was first setting up that other prayer Bible I wasn't quite sure about the tabs I was kind of feeling it out and then I really got to the point where I have character of God what God does for us what believers do to purpose in our heart that's my favorite section sins and warnings and then prayer model um, so those are all those tabs and if you do ask for these inserts, they're organized now. So I would send them out the red character of God, the pink what God does for us. That's the way they'll they'll be sent in those chunks. And of course, I might have put things in the wrong spot. You might decide, well, I really like that better as what God does for us. It was Some of them are really tricky. Like it's a character of God, but it's what God does for us because of his character. So I have ADD and it can make me have a little struggle with making decisions. I do want to mention also, I, I think I've, this video is probably long enough. So because I know you can ask for these inserts, I was thinking I wouldn't go through all of them. But one thing I want to mention is there's one, actually, I think I can find it. So this one is this red tab at the bottom and it's the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Now, if you ask for these inserts, when you get it, there's going to be maybe four or five images because I had forgotten that I found this one and glued it into my Bible. And then I found a bunch of other ones that I liked the looks of and I was deciding and I decided on one of them and printed it out. And then when I got to the page to put it into my Bible, I realized I already had one there, but I kind of liked the other images better. So I'm going to go ahead and give you all of them that I liked. I think this is the one, but I'm not sure. So if you decide to get the inserts, just take a look at what's on the page. Make sure you want everything in there or I guess I I would say when you get the inserts from me don't just push print you'll want to take a look at what's on there and make sure it's what you want to have on there this section of the turquoise tabs at the bottom are set up a little bit differently because they're not necessarily right next to the verse so i'm just going to show this to you so i had this in my other prayer bible and it was on two sheets and i just moved it into one and it shows the tabernacle and it's just a model of prayer you don't have to do that but what we do is we come into the gates with praise and then we remember Christ's sacrifice and we confess our sins into his blood. 
So all of our sins need to get into his blood. We're in this atypical day of atonement. The typical was in the Old Testament where every year all the sin would get into the sanctuary and then it would be cleansed. Uh, and so we're in that atypical day and we have Christ now. And so we want to get all of our sins into his blood. We're going to confess. Then we're going to be cleansed. We're going to ask God to cleanse us through the power of his word and we accept the forgiveness that he offers. And then we have the seven branch candlestick and we're gonna ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit, the table of showbread. And so with that, we're gonna ask God to supply our needs and the altar of incense. This is gonna be supplication through our intercessor. Christ's righteous prayers cover our own, making them acceptable to God. We find that out in Revelation. So we're covered by his righteousness and because of that, because we've gone through all the steps, we're able to intercede for others. And so at this point, that is where I go into these praying for other people. Uh, and all of these can be done simultaneously. So you can be praying for your own needs at the same time as you're praying for other people's needs. It's not like a step-by-step, -step, but we want to recognize that it's Christ over us. And then the Ark of the Covenant, this is where we can be in thankfulness in worship and prayer, reflecting on all that God has done for us. We can have that daily prayer walk, that kind of thing. But now I'm going to go to the next section in these blue tabs. This is right at Psalm 141 is where I decided to place it. And I'm going to read this to you. Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as incense and the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the door of my lips. Incline not my heart to say any evil thing. To practice wicked works with men that work iniquity. And let me not eat of their dainties. This to me is so powerful. The things that we say that just pop out of our mouths, the things that I say that just pop out of my mouth because I'm feeling irritated about something. Like even when you're just with your spouse, you know, and then let me not eat if they're dainties, you know, the TV shows, those kind of things. Like even some of the Christian movies, you know, they're not always something that's going to benefit us. Um, that used to be a huge struggle for me with TV, watching everything of the world. And so Thankfully, I've gotten away from the majority of it, but there's some things that still I just get into a mood to watch certain things that I just don't think in this day and age, we don't want to be taking things into our hearts and minds because it does influence our thought process. And so for me, I shouldn't say we don't want to. This is where God has brought me. The way I feel about it is I really want to just be completely connected with God and letting the world go because all of this is going to burn up and it doesn't do anything to build me up. So anyways, just what I'm really wrestling through. So that really impacts me. Then verse five, let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness and let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil. So these are the righteous that are going to come beside us and tell us when we're off track, those kind of things. So it shall be a kindness. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head for yet my prayer also shall be in their calamity. So we're going to be praying for each other. When their judges are overthrown in stony places, they shall hear my words for they are sweet. Our bones are scattered at the grave's mouth as when one cutteth and cleaveth wood upon the earth. But mine eyes are upon thee. O God, the Lord in thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. Keep me from the snares which they have laid for me and the gins of the workers of iniquity. Let the wicked fall into their own nets while I withal escape. So they're going to fall into things that they've asked for. And he doesn't want us rejoicing in the what comes upon the evil, even though they've chosen it. He doesn't want us rejoicing in that. But they are going to fall prey to their own imaginations. They're going to do it to themselves. So anyways, that's the start of that. And then I want to be reminded of what God does for us. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Jeremiah 18, 4. And then Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. This is that. I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I love that verse. So I have that right here for myself. And then Luke 1, 38, and Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. So I want it to be according to thy word. And then Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. And I've been hearing a lot of talk about how people take this verse out of context. I don't really understand why people are making such a big deal about it. It says all things. And of course, that doesn't mean 
I'm going to win the race. So maybe that's what they're meaning when they're saying we take it out of context, like I can do anything. But it's all the things that he wants of us, the fruits of the spirit, all of that. He's going to be the one that strengthens us. That's the way I look at it. Um, I know I get confused when I start hearing people say, that's the one verse everyone takes out of context. I don't, I have a hard time watching it, so I don't really know what they mean there. But uh, anyways, here is some information on Genesis 32, 26. And the reason this one is so important to me that I put it here is because it says that in the end times, it's going to be at the time of Jacob's trouble. And in Genesis 32, 26, we read about that, how he's struggling with an angel, which ends up being God. And so Jacob clings on to him and Christ says to him, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And so we need to have that kind of a faith where no matter what happens, we're clinging on to Jesus. His hip went out of sockets and all he could do was cling to Jesus. And so this write up on it says, the greatest victories are won through earnest prayer. Jacob prevailed because he was persevering and determined. His experience testifies to the power of of importunate prayer. It is now that we are able to learn this lesson of prevailing prayer, of unyielding faith. The greatest victories to the church of Christ or to the individual Christian are not those that are gained by talent or education, by wealth or the favor of men. They are those victories that are gained in the audience chamber with God when earnest, agonizing faith lays hold upon the mighty arm of power. Those who are unwilling to forsake every sin and to seek earnestly for God's blessing will not obtain it. But all who lay hold of God's promises, as did Jacob, and be as earnest and persevering as he was, will succeed as he succeeded. So what I did is I color-coded some words and I just gave myself some definitions like agonizing determined and I color coded them so they matched and as I was looking at this I see like victories I got that one in blue but for some reason I missed that one so before I send it out I'll make sure I get all those colors right if you're interested in this and just to remind you if this is something you're not interested in just don't print this page don't worry about it so then I have before I move into the next section I have search us O God and know our hearts try us and know our thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in us and lead us in the way everlasting now, one thing I did in this, I found this image and it had search me, oh God, and know my heart, which is very true. I almost should have that written right next to it as an individual prayer, but a lot of times I want to be praying for my brethren, so I change it to us and our because I, I want to be praying for all of us. So search us and know our hearts and lead us in the way everlasting. So that was Psalm 139, 23 and 24. And then here is Jeremiah 17, 14. Heal us, O Lord, and we shall be healed. Save us and we shall be saved for thou art our praise. So he is going to do all these things if he does it, it's going to happen. If he says it's going to happen. And then I showed this in my prayer Bible. This is not something new, but I'm going to show it to you just in case. It says, God, I confess my blank as sin. This was from a book that my husband found online. It was a prayer and you stick in your sin. Like, so say you're really dealing with pride or judgmental attitude. God, I confess my judgmental attitude as sin. Jesus, I believe you died to take away my sins. I do not want to be controlled by a judgmental attitude anymore. Lord, I ask you to take this judgmental attitude from me and give me your, and I put next to it humility in return, but it could be peace or, you know, whatever you want. I just made this as a guide for myself. Lord, I ask you to take this judgmental attitude from me and give me your humility in return. I ask you to heal the wound in my soul and I receive your healing. So again, this isn't something that I feel like, okay, I have to do this in order to be saved, that kind of thing. It's just a tool among many that I can do. And I felt at times when I was really wrestling with something, it's almost like it feels like surgery on the frontal lobe. I don't know how I can explain it. It's this feeling of something happening. So this isn't something that I've ever felt like I needed to do. This is one tool among many uh, that I can use and I've appreciated how it's helped me at times. And then here on the back is that Psalm 145, praising God. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. This is that ending of praising God. So that is all right with Psalm 141. I just kind of stuck that all together. And then something I like to do is pray to have the armor of God and so one thing that's different about this one is I took out those little images of the armor because I didn't really need them just to be able to make this bigger. And this one is one where you have each piece of armor and then a Bible verse that talks about that 
piece of armor. And I do have another insert that I put in my study Bible. I'll put a link to that study in the pinned comments. So that's the last thing that I go through with that. So that's where I put all of those just to show you. What I have at the top here are the fruits of the spirits. And these are based off of this. It's this child training Bible and virtue training Bible and has different categories all around it. This is where I got this idea from. It was very popular in the homeschooling circles. It was all over Facebook is where I saw it. And it was about training your children and going through verses with them. But I found as I set up the Bible, and it's pretty old and messy, but as I set up the Bible for my kids, I realized it was impacting my emotional state. And so I made one for myself. So anyways, that amazed me so much. And these do cost I think $8 each for these. It's a whole set of cards with Bible verses for each category. And I just want to remind you, if you're overseas and can't get these, you can put in the Google search, what does the Bible say about anger? What does the Bible say about defiance? I do appreciate just having it all laid out for myself, but it isn't something that needs to be purchased. And so anyways, what I did with this is anger. When I look at a verse for anger, is that related to love or peace or temperance? like keeping control over your spirits, that kind of thing. So I use Bible verses and just add them into here and I just tab them. And I just took all of it and combined it into just the fruits of the spirit. People will have verses that have to do with marriage or finances. And what I do is I take those and put them into the fruit of the spirit instead. So if I'm learning to be more loving, I'm going to become a better wife. If I'm struggling with patience with my spouse, you know, that's where long suffering will come in. Um, having self-control, like if I'm dealing with addictions or any of that, temperance will come in. Peace is a really good one for if somebody's dealing with fear because it talks about, you know, you stand still, have peace, and I will take care of the situation. Those are those kind of verses that end up here. So I find that very helpful. So if you're familiar with that series, I'll just go down here. What I've set up are inserts. So if someone is struggling with finances or finding a home or they have unspoken requests, whatever it is, there are these columns of tabs that you would add them to. So here's a quick look at the categories. And one thing you'll notice if you looked at the prayer Bible series that I did earlier, there are two categories that I've added. And one is for spouse and one is for children because I thought those were important categories to really focus. Like your spouse can have these other issues, but you can just, there's something about just pouring your heart out for your spouse or for your children. And I'll go back to this tab to show you. I have one other insert that I've added. So how this works again is you'd go down to the second red one on the side here. And so this red tab brings you back to this prayer sheet. And I'll show you that in a minute, but I wanted to show you this insert. I found this image online. I really liked it. It's Lamentations 219. So that's why I put it next to this in the Bible. And it says, pour out your heart like water before the face of the Lord. Lift up your hands toward him for the lives of your children. And then on the back, Psalm 127 verses 3 through 5. Children are heritage from the Lord, offspring a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are children born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their opponents in court. So I liked those two verses and I liked the pictures. And and then next to it is this blank sheet. I had always thought with a war binder that you had to do it in a notebook because prayers change. So, you know, you'd run out of room as you're praying and then prayers get fulfilled and all of that. But I saw a video by Bible and Coffee Times where they were showing their prayer journal. What they did is set up prayer sheets in a binder, but instead of writing prayers directly on the sheet, they would actually have squares where you would set them up on little sticky notes. And so you would write your request for someone on that. And so that was like a huge light bulb moment for me. And I realized I can put this into a Bible. I don't have to be stuck with a notebook where I'm printing off scripture and gluing it onto notebook sheets. I can just put the inserts into a Bible and also use these sticky notes. And you just write out your prayer request, put them onto your prayer journal. You can color code like maybe maybe one color is for one child and another color is for another child, write out your requests for them and then just attach them to this. And then what can happen is as you have answered prayers, you can have a separate spot and move those onto it or maybe 
write in a journal, you know, just pour out your heart how God answered those prayers, just as various ideas. So that's how this part works, how it went from being a separate notebook into a Bible itself. So in my other Prayer Bible Warbinder series, I went through each of these tabs and showed them to you. You can go through them. Some people have like certain days, they go through certain types of needs, that kind of thing. So what you would do is pray over the sticky tabs that are on this. Say you have somebody that's dealing with an addiction or they say, you know, pray for my uncle. He's struggling with alcohol. So you write them on a sticky note on this sheet on temperance and addictions. And then what you can do is when you come to that request, you can go up here to temperance and pray some of these scriptures that are connected with it. I talk a little bit more about that. So these are inserts that are here, but up here it's just tabs. And at that tab, there are verses that you highlight connected with that. Let's see, actually I do have some started so I can show you. Let's see, actually. So like here at Galatians 5.22 is an example of what it looks like. So there are tabs at the top and because this is the fruits of the spirit, they're all here. But I just took a crayon and colored each of those words. And also it happens to be that there's an insert next to it and it goes with this purple tab set of tabs at the bottom. And so these are just Bible verses on each of these. But then on here, how it works is that it's colored in. Each of these fruits of the Spirit have their own color. So just to show you another example, instead of highlighting a whole verse, I just find that tricky because it can be more than one thing. Like here, orange is for temperance, and then dark blue is for goodness, and yellow is for peace. Some people do where you highlight the whole set of verses, and then maybe you box around in a different color, and then you box around that with another color. And then here, I wrote patience up here at the top because it's kind of that whole set and then at the top here all these have their different colors so that's how it works here oh one thing i forgot to say is at the back here are all of those bible verses that went with each one and i have the tabs covering it i did it on the back side so that this part wouldn't be covered not sure if i'll switch that around but these are all the bible verses that go with this section down here and the reason I wanted that here is because sometimes I might want to just see the verses really quickly on a category and not have to flip to that page. So I wanted to keep that here. So that's what I put on the back there. But anyways, I'm going to end on this prayer that I have at the beginning of my Bible. It's not a prayer from the Bible. It's just an amazing prayer that I want to remind myself to do often. Not that we should do prayers by rote and not even think about what we're saying, but actually pray this thought process, even if it's not these exact words. But it says, Take me, O Lord, as wholly thine. I lay all my plans at thy feet. Use me today in thy service. Abide with me and let all my work be wrought in thee. This is a daily matter. Each morning, consecrate yourself to God for that day. Surrender all your plans to Him to be carried out or given up as His providence shall indicate. So this is such an important thing for me because I can get so determined that this is what I'm going to do uh, and I need to give them to God. Thus day by day you may be giving your life into the hands of God and thus your life will be molded more and more after the life of Christ. And then the prayer at the bottom here. No outward observance can take the place of simple faith, an entire renunciation of self, but no man can empty himself of self. We can only consent for Christ to accomplish the work. Then the language of the soul will be, Lord, take my heart, for I cannot give it. It is thy property. Keep it pure, for I cannot keep it for thee. Save me in spite of myself, my weak, unchristlike self. Mold me, fashion me, raise me into a pure and holy atmosphere where the rich current of thy love can flow through my soul. And then I liked this right up on the back here. And it says, Many make a serious mistake in the religious life by keeping the attention fixed upon their feelings and thus judging of their advancement or decline. Feelings are not a safe criterion. We are not to look within for evidence of our acceptance with God. We shall find there nothing but that which will discourage us. Our only hope is in looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. There is everything in him to inspire with hope, with faith, and with courage. He is our righteousness, our consolation and rejoicing. Those who look within for comfort will become weary and disappointed. A sense of our weakness and unworthiness should lead us with humility of heart to plead the atoning sacrifice of Christ. 
As we rely upon His merits, we shall find rest and peace and joy. He saves to the uttermost all who come unto God by Him. We need to trust in Jesus daily, hourly. He has promised that as our day is, our strength shall be. By His grace, we may bear all the burdens of the present and perform its duties. But many are weighed down by the anticipation of future troubles. They are constantly seeking to bring tomorrow's burdens into today. Thus, a large share of all their trials are imaginary. For these, Jesus has made no provision. He promises grace only for the day. He bids us not to burden ourselves with the cares and troubles of tomorrow, for sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. The habit of brooding over anticipated evils is unwise and unchristian. In thus doing, we fail to enjoy the blessings and to improve the opportunities of the present. The Lord requires us to perform the duties of today and to endure its trials. We are today to watch that we offend not in word or deed. We must today praise and honor God. By the exercise of living faith today, we are to conquer the enemy. We must today seek God and be determined that we will not rest satisfied with Without his presence, we should watch and work and pray as though this was the last day that would be granted us. How intensely earnest then would be our life! How closely would we follow Jesus in all our words and deeds! There are few who rightly appreciate or improve the precious privilege of prayer. We should go to Jesus and tell him all our needs. We may bring him our little cares and perplexities as well as our greater troubles. Whatever arises to disturb or distress us, we should take it to the Lord in prayer. When we feel that we need the presence of Christ at every step, Satan will have little opportunity to intrude his temptations. It is his studied effort to keep us away from our best and most sympathizing friend. We should make no one our confidant but Jesus. We can safely commune with him of all that is in our hearts. Prayer is the most holy exercise of the soul. It should be sincere, humble, earnest, the desires of a renewed heart breathed in the presence of a holy God. When the suppliant feels that he is in the divine presence, self will be forgotten. He will have no desire to display human talent. He will not seek to please the ear of men, but to obtain the blessing which the soul craves. If we would only take the Lord at his word, what blessings might be ours? Would that there were more fervent, effectual prayer. Christ will be the helper of all who seek him in faith. So that's kind of an overview, and if you have questions, please let me know. I do have that actual prayer Bible series, and you'd want to watch all of those videos, and it will show how it all ties together, and hopefully it will make more sense at that time. In closing, I just want to say remember that there's no one method of coming to God with your prayers. The thing that he asks us is to connect with him. He loves us. He wants us to see him more clearly every day. So don't get overwhelmed with thinking that you need to even create a prayer Bible. God is the answer. He loves you. Remember that. And remember, Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And he hates the human race. He hates all of us. And so don't listen to him. Listen to God. Dwell on the promises of God that he is going to change us. He's the one that does all the work. So until next time, be well and God bless.